All right, so I'm going to give you all a chance to contemplate everything that has gone before as we advance the slide slightly. There we go. All right, so now, um, Dick uh, Hathaway, who just spoke, did a very good job of reviewing what our mission is in terms of how it's written. But I wanted to say just um, informally a little bit about what, how, what our mission is and how it's been interpreted and how it's been revisioned in the past few years. Um, if you've seen our newsletters, our reports, you know we've been doing some amazing things online. We are uh, uh, imagining our mission now as a process of, oh, let me see if I make it get, happen. I was going to be smooth. All right. So uh, but as, a, as a process of taking all the content that we have traditionally produced and, and disseminating it out to the world. So we have um, translations of Swedenborg's writings. Um, we've always been the custodian of the standard edition and then the redesigned standard edition volumes. Um, more recently, and I say recently, uh, only within the past 15 to 20 years, uh, so, so a very recent development. Um, the New Century Edition, um, new translations of Swedenborg's writings. Um, and uh, we are discovering on an ongoing basis just how new uh, these translations are uh, versus some of the translations that have been done before. Um, we continue to publish books about Swedenborg's thought. So we're publishing books that interpret his ideas for new audiences, talk about his influence, and, and kind of spread his ideas in new ways. But, and I'm sure you're all aware that this has become a very important part of our mission, also reaching out on video, online, um, to um, interpret Swedenborg's writings and give perspective on Swedenborg's writings um, through the Off the Left Eye channel on YouTube and through other venues also. So all of these different ways of presenting Swedenborg's ideas are what we're taking and putting out to the world through many, many different channels. So you see up here we have um, we have the Off the Left Eye channel. We have the Heaven and Hell fa uh, Facebook page. Uh, we have our website, Swedenborg.com, and we have a number of other social media channels as well. And all of these channels have experienced significant growth in the past year, which is something that we're incredibly excited about. Okay, so we're talking first about Off the Left Eye on YouTube. Um, so first I have uh, some, some really fun news to share that's very fresh. Um, we just, uh, within the past week or so, passed 50,000 subscribers on the Off the Left Eye YouTube channel. Uh, so we've been seeing some wonderful growth on that, um, just a steady increase in people who are subscribing to the channel, people who are getting engaged in it. Um, I've got two statistics up in the chart up there. One is minutes watched and one is video views. And again, you can kind of see since the channel was, um, was launched, um, we've had just phenomenal growth in both of these statistics. Last year, we had um, about 31 million minutes watched. Uh, and uh, ab about 3.5 million individual views of our videos. So if you're really, really good at math, you can work out that's about 10 minutes per video. Um, and that's actually a significant statistic unto itself uh, because one of the things that um, happens when you post a video on YouTube is that YouTube's little algorithms, the little, little, uh, little robots in, within YouTube decide what videos they're going to promote and what videos they're going to recommend to other people. So the way they decide what videos are going to recommend to people with similar interests, since there are so many videos on YouTube, is by looking at how long people spend watching individual videos, looking at how many ch subscribers a channel has, looking at how many, how much time overall people have spent watching the channel. So part of the growth that we've been experiencing over the last year has been specifically because we've been um, very lucky to have a wonderful team that's producing some awesome content. Lots of people are getting interested in it and they're um, watching more and more. So we're getting a, a, a ever increasing amount of time that people are spending watching it and that helps us promote the channel on a uh, to, on a wider basis. And you can also see on the sides uh, some, uh, some titles of recent episodes there. 
Another way that we reach out is through the Heaven and Hell Facebook page. Um, and again, you can see we have um, we have page likes. Page likes basically mean that somebody has decided they want to follow the page. They want to receive all their posts in their personal uh, feed on YouTube. Um, we've been having a really significant growth in that also. And again, you can the, the chart kind of says it all there. Um, the um, we, we just, in February, uh, passed 400,000 page likes on there. So that's basically 400,000 people who said, we love this Facebook page, we love you guys, we want to hear more about Swedenborg. Uh, most of what's posted on the channel are um, quotes from Swedenborg, often they're paired with an image that illustrates the concept. Um, and we, so we try to promote sharing of that, to give people thoughts to think about. We also provide links to videos so that people can kind of get a, a way to access more information about a particular topic. So, um, one of the ways in which we promote growth on this channel is by advertising and, and drawing people to the page and um, also promoting posts that they appear in people's feeds. So an individual post might appear in maybe half a million people's feeds, um, it, depending on the, uh, on the, the, the post, the individual post. We've had some posts, and so you can see an example up there of two of the most popular posts on the page. Um, some of our most popular posts have reached a mil more than a million people each, um, which is uh, one of the goals we kind of set out to, to accomplish when we first set up the channel. On on the website, Swedenborg.com, um, again, seeing um, the, uh, the left side shows growth in visitors. Um, one of the major things that we want to promote on the website is download of ebooks. So this is, again, kind of a reinterpretation of our traditional mission. The Swedenborg Foundation started out with the mission and the goal of making Swedenborg's writings as widely available as possible. And so back in 1849, that meant printing books and distributing, physically distributing the books for people for either free or as low a cost as possible. Today we accomplish that through the internet. Um, and so as wet traffic to the site increases, we're also seeing a really healthy increase in the number of, of books that people download. So last year it was um, just under 50,000 books, that individual books that people downloaded from our site. Um, so that part, that's part of our strategy when we drive people to the site. But we also try to encourage them to find out more about Swedenborg and get more information about his thought and his ideas. We have standing pages on the site that talk about Swedenborg's biography, that talk about key elements of his thought. And those are some of the most popular pages on the site because this is some of the information that people are seeking out when they're coming to our site and when they're searching for us. Um, we also have produce original content um, in the in terms of obviously links to the videos we produce, but also um, blog posts. So we have articles that go up on a regular basis about different aspects of Swedenborg's thought. So we try to provide as many ways as possible for people to get interested in Swedenborg and to access his ideas and to learn more if they want. So there are opportunities for people to just read a little bit if they want to just know a little bit, or to to download his book and read the whole book for free if they want. And it's one of the things that we really enjoy being able to do. So all of the things I'm talking about are base level spreading of awareness. And I talked about the fact, and, and Dick talked about the fact that one of the things that we, we want to do, that we're really trying to do with our mission, is reaching out and spreading awareness, trying to make as many people as possible aware of Swedenborg's thought. But beyond simple awareness, we want people to really engage with the ideas. You know, we want people, obviously, not just to download the books, but to read them. We want people to contact us and ask questions and give feedback and think about what they ha they've, they've said or what they've heard or what they've seen and really, um, really, you know, absorb it and, and and find ways to, and find more ways to get into it and to have a response when they contact us. So to that end, um, we have a team of moderators who answer questions on social media. Um, you can see the kind of things they're faced with up there, just streams of comments and questions um, all day, every day. Last year, we got 35,000 comments on the, uh, on the YouTube alone, on our Off the Left Eye channel. And a lot of those are questions about Swedenborg or his philosophy or something, you know, 
all or you know something about that what the video was about a lot of them are comments that need responses so we've got a team of about half a dozen people who are spend some amount of their time just answering those comments and one of the things we've been able to do through donor support over the past year is allow them to spend more time with those people so not only are we spreading awareness of Swedenborg but we're also having some some kind of virtual face-to-face -face contact some person-to-person -person contact in terms of them being able to say hey what about this and getting feedback on this too so to talk a little bit more about what's been happening especially with the off, off the left uh, YouTube channel we have none other than mr. Curtis Childs who's going to be coming up next <laughs> Hey everybody, um, so I want to say that I, I've already talked to two people who traveled a long distance to get here today. And I just want to say thank you so much to you guys and, and everybody who's here is giving their time to the, to the Swedenborg Foundation and a lot of you have supported in all kinds of different ways. So what I want to do here is show you that we take this seriously you know, and that we're really, that, that's no small thing that people are, are, are liking what we're doing and participating in what we're doing. So we're really trying to do it well, and I'm going to show you how we're going to try, but I'm going to get off to a slow start because I thought, so I asked Morgan for these slides because I thought I would have to uh, introduce what Off the Left Eye and Heaven and Hell are, but Morgan already did. So, like, here's a picture of, of Off the Left Eye and, and Heaven and Hell. So that, that's what they are. Do you guys know what they are by now? Okay, Off the Left Eye is the videos, Heaven and Hell is the Facebook page. And I've been involved in both of those projects. And so... To get that stuff going and make sure that we continue to um, to, to tackle those challenges and, and participate in that in the best way that we can, uh, we've recently upgraded our, our office space. We actually entered into uh, a lease with Bernathan College for a really beautiful space. Pictured here is the coolest looking room in our space, uh, so I thought I would take a photo of it. And we used to, if you had seen us uh, you know, before we moved in here in September, we were all like working out of it was one room. It was like here to the railing what was the size of it and it was really just like the table where we shot the show was there and then everyone's computers were here and we were kind of hunched in and doing that so on you know I was talking to people who are saying that on the website you might not have noticed that much of a change like if you're watching this show but in our lives and our ability to do this and do it well it's been a huge change we have this large collaborative space here where you can get this see this large green screen that's not actually where we shoot the show but you can get full body motion capture there or not motion capture like isolated video capture there we can record a night there's a nice looking fireplace there we record interviews but most importantly it's an open collaborative space so that if we need to have meetings and we have people working they can all do it there there's separate rooms where we broadcast the show out of we get to have an interview studio all of this uh, at, at our incredibly reasonable rate, so we're able to put more effort behind the scenes into making a, a more interesting and better project. So we're doing that and we're doing it as well as we can and we take efficiency seriously. So this is a little bit of how our workflow goes. We're making a show every week, which might not sound like that much work, but it's a ton of work to get uh, good quality content at, at an hour plus per week. So we run through this in an infinite loop and I'll start actually at the bottom right, that's a chart that illustrates what, who's doing what on what day. Because you think about, you have a writing team and then a graphics team and they've gotta be working um, sometimes together and sometimes in, in parallel because you have to be working on next week's show because that's gotta be written before this week's show is done and then you gotta rehearse it. So it just shows what everyone's doing on every day. Once you get a show started, you flip back up to the top left there. That's how we lay out ideas. Because you've got to see, like you've got all this information, you've got your topic, and you, okay, what idea goes after what idea, and what's going to be a video, and what's going to be a quote, and what's going to be, we've got to figure that out, we've got to be able to look at it, so we make that document there, and that lets us know what we're going to have to do, but that's not very good organization in terms of actually making sure, is this done, is this done, who's doing this, so we move it to this middle Excel spreadsheet, who doesn't love Excel spreadsheets? Where you, where it's this is like color coded that this person does this, this person is responsible for this. You put a little X when it's done, when it's reviewed, you check it off. So that all of this is because we need to be able to do this stuff and do it well and do it over and over again and do it efficiently so that we can soak every last bit of, of, of time up doing something constructive for the program. So we're really working to refine and get the abs because because you know we're we're working uh, uh, and in every minute we spend we want it to be contributing to 
to make it a better and better experience for people. You know, that, that's the point. So we're doing that. And we've had it's this year has been really fun. Uh, so was last year. But I think it gets more fun every year or funner, I should say. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> We've been getting people who want to participate. I mean, we've been having people at various academic institutions. You see Adelphi University there on Long Island. We had a professor who was integrating our material into a course that she had. So she had her students writing papers uh, about Swedenborg, and they're considering like taking a little trip out here to see us. So you have that. De Montfort University that's in the UK, I have a professor there who's sending me these long articles that he's writing based on Swedenborg, and he references our videos in one of them. So, so just these cool connections we're making. Um, that that like scenic place there. That's a town in Switzerland. With a pastor there uh, sent me a, an email saying that she's started to work Swedenborg into her sermons now, and is starting a little Swedenborg group, and that, that she's watching there. Um, and then that's a the the pic, middle picture there is a, a screen capture from a CNN interview with parents uh, of somebody who was killed in the the Nice attacks. In France, uh, and there's this a long story that I'll, I'll truncate now. But uh, their son was killed, and they were worried that that he was alone all night. His body was alone all night because they they were far away. He was just traveling in France, um, so that was really haunting them. The idea of that, but they they received the call like the summer later, saying that there was actually two French women who had found him and, and stayed and prayed with him with a candle all night, and that that, that meant a lot to them because it's. He, somebody was with him. And then in this interview, the, the father said that it reminded him of Swedenborg's idea of two angels being close to the person after they die, as Swedenborg describes it. Um, and we actually got in touch with him and talked to him. And he had, it turns out he had watched our show and that that's how he'd had that idea in the first place. And we're going to get him to do an interview with us. Yeah, at, at some point. So just just amazing to think it's not like, hey, look, we can get publicity out of this, but it's like we are producing ideas or, or, or experiences that, that that's like what do you go through that's worse than that, but, um, but this helps, you know, like that, it helps. That, that's what we're doing. Um, we got to be on the Dr. Oz show, um, or our, our video did. We, we made a video called You Are the Lungs, and they showed a good chunk of it at the end of uh, like a uh, a faithful Friday show of theirs where they're taking a look at spirituality, religion kind of stuff. And so they, they showed it and they had our YouTube channel flash on the bottom and it was great. And we got a few comments like, hey, I saw you on Dr. Oz. So that's how I found this channel. So that was a cool little um, thing. And now we can say like, as seen on the Dr. Oz show. But don't say it too much. There's, there's this copyright stuff. Um, uh, there, I, I got invited to speak in London. They're going to airplane me out there. And all these other people, that's like a clip from their website. All those other people wrote good books that sold like bestsellers. But they also wanted somebody to explain Swedenborg's model of consciousness. So they're going to have me go out there and, and talk about it. So it's just cool to, to see. Um, it's just an independent thing that, you know, not like a Swedenborgian conference, just that, that they're saying, hey, this is cool. We want to be a part of it. So we just get these fun connections uh, that we make in addition to the, just the amazing feeling of, of that big audience that, that Morgan was describing to you there. And that these are people who really want to, if you had told me four years ago, people are going to want to watch an hour long show about Swedenborg. I don't know. I don't know if I would have believed you, but, but it's happening and it's the coolest thing in the world because we get to share this, this stuff that's so important to us and to see it actually like mattering to people is like, that's, that's, that's why we're doing it. That's the whole reason that we're doing it. Um, to prove that it is, you could, because you, you could be saying, nobody cares about the show. You're just making that up. So I wanted to, and probably most of you are thinking that, um, I wanted to share with you some comments, which we often do, but here's the game we're playing. To prove that we're not just cherry picking the best comments, all of these are from the past two weeks. And actually, they're really just from a, like a one week window in the middle of that, but we researched them a little before this presentation. So we'll call it two weeks. The point is that um, we're getting feedback like this all the time. So this one says, love your channel and the great way you present this incredibly important information. I am now a Swedenborg fan and we'll be exploring his work from now on. Thank you for all you do. Blessings to you. And I like that because it shows, hey, they find the channel and now they're into it and they're going in and they're exploring more and they're saying thank you. It means that we must have brought them something of value. I finally found what I was looking for. 50 years of doubt finally lifted. Thank you. 50 years is a long time. That's a heavy weight. And if we could play any role in lifting that, 
for that person, uh, we've done something good. And like, imagine the, like, imagine the feeling that would spur you to write that comment because you don't have to comment, you know. So, so something is going on there. Um, oh, this is showing the, the tenacity that some people are watching this with. I think I've watched all the Off the Left Eye episodes now. And you might say, who cares? But that's like 200 hour long episodes. <laughs> watched at least two a night till three or four in the morning when I first discovered the Swedenborg Foundation just to catch up with all the ones I'd missed before I found them. Imagine it's 245 and you're like, well, I could do one more episode. <laughs> um, now, I make sure to watch Monday night's episode when I can each week so I don't get behind. It's part of my routine and homey time now. And then uh, you see some, some clearing up in the mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ever since, I found that ever since I came across this channel, everything started to make a lot more sense to me. Not only did it throw out the confused mess that is the traditional doctrine of Christianity out the window. Now, some of you, you may love that doctrine for this particular person. This was, they probably, with what they were raised, this was a clearing out for them. But life itself and all religions started to make a lot more sense as well. You can really apply Swedenborg's teachings to your life and it is very practical. When I first saw this channel, I was very skeptical towards its content, but I gave it a shot anyway, which makes sense. He's like, it's got a weird name. It's just like, I pop up and I go, hey, everybody, we're going to talk about something weird. But, so you're skeptical initially, but then today this channel is the most important one on YouTube for me. So you give it a shot. And that's, that's what we're trying to do in a nutshell, is that Swedenborg, when you first find him, you could be very skeptical, but if you give it a shot, it becomes important. So we're just trying to facilitate that process here. And then finally... I don't know how I stumbled upon this channel, but I'm so glad I did. Since I lost my daughter, it's helped me to understand why I'm here. You're doing good off the left eye. So we're trying to do good, and we're trying to give people something valuable. Uh, and, and this is just the last couple of weeks. It's not all the positive comments we got. It's just some of them to show that, that all of us together, because all of you guys are helping with this, we're, we're giving people something that's obviously of value. And so that's what we want to continue to do. Um, and the bedrock of all this, I and mean, really we've been launching all this based on having, you know, Swedenborg's material accessible. And, and the next speaker here is Guy, who's been making it accessible through this wonderful series of translations. Please welcome to this stage, Dr. Jonathan Rose. Thank you. Yes, Mike. My claim to fame is that I moonlight on the Swedenborg and Life show, but uh, I actually have a day job uh, working for the New Century Edition, working with words. And a lot of my slides uh, just take the form of words. I love words. Um, and they are the bedrock. Underneath the Heaven and Hell Facebook page, underneath the YouTube channel, uh, are all these quotes from Swedenborg. That's what drives the whole thing. So getting those words right is, is so important. The, uh, so this is a report on the New Century Edition, particularly in the year 2016, what happened there. So the calendar year 2016 saw the shorter works of 1758, composed of New Jerusalem, Last Judgment, White Horse, and Other Planets by Swedenborg, come into the foreground of the NCE work, even as the NCE team continued to bring the much-anticipated volumes of Marriage, Love, Revelation, Unveiled, and the Secrets of Heaven series closer to conclusion. We also did some reprinting this year. An important part of keeping project standards up to date, not to mention a welcome sign that print runs are selling out. Our team activities included translating, editing, annotating, indexing, building the accompanying scholarly materials required for the NCE series, and checking and copy editing our way through the stack of manuscripts on our desks. The newest published member of the NCE collection in 2016 was the portable edition of New Jerusalem, a work that's a valuable introduction to Swedenborg's theology. And this was a cause for extra celebration because this is the first new English translation of this work to include the material at the end of each chapter since this person was president of the United States. <laughs> Anybody know who that is? William Taft, you are correct. 103 years uh, since this, all the editions, many editions have come out in the past century, but they all omitted this material, even though it constitutes 69% of the work. <clears throat> the print publication of New Jerusalem was accompanied by its release in ebook format. 
The translation text is now ready for inclusion in the shorter works of 1758, once the remaining works in that volume are ready as well. In that vein, I finished my edit of Last Judgment and White Horse and began work on other planets. Once those are finished, along with supplements, we will be able to publish not only the portable editions of those works, but to collect them into the deluxe books in which they belong, the shorter works of 1758 and the shorter works of 1763. The index and annotations for the former volume are essentially complete and are currently on Alicia Dole's desk for copy editing checks. In addition, a good portion of the 1758 works volume has been typeset, so completion is in sight. And this work, the shorter works of 1763, also gained ground. Lee S. Wolfenden made significant progress writing and editing the annotations. Four of the five translations in this collected volume have been published in their portable editions, The Lord, Sacred Scripture, Life, and Faith, and only supplements remains to be edited. Secrets of Heaven reached new milestones in 2016. The translation of volume 14 and its Latin consultation were completed. Lisa Hyatt Cooper is now well into her translation of volume 15, the final volume of the entire series. Many other pub unpublished volumes progressed as well. Lisa continued to work with David Keating on literary reviews of her translations. Copy editing work was done on volumes 3 through 13, and select annotation assignments in volumes 3 through 13 were sent to Joel Brown, a new outside annotator. Stuart Shotwell and I are optimistic that work on these volumes will go quickly. The deluxe ebook of Secrets of Heaven Volume 1 was released in March. Its internal links to the hundreds of cross-references, footnotes, and endnotes make it a highly accessible format to get the most out of the deluxe volume. In 2016, the Marriage Love translation moved to Stuart Shotwell's desk for his editorial review. Eric Odner is bringing his editing skills to bear to expedite progress on this significant work. And the two volumes of Revelation Unveiled were advanced as well. Early in the year, Lee Wolfenden completed his annotation edit, and Sky Kerr finished her draft of the index to the translation in early 2017. So my next slide is a slide of our progress overall. I don't expect you to be able to read this, but it has 36 rows for all the various titles and volumes and 23 columns for all the processes that each title has to go through. And the blue squares that you'll see mean that that process is complete. So here we are. <laughs> there are more blue squares than white. We're making progress. It's a good thing. So uh, we are filling in the chart. In addition, the Swedenborg Foundation's publishing philosophy is to maintain and refresh all of the NCE library on an ongoing basis. So when it came to our attention that stocks of four of the portable titles were getting low, Heaven and Hell, Secrets of Heaven, Volume 1, True Christianity, Volume 1, and Divine Providence, we reviewed and corrected the files. The reprints of the first two of these titles were released in 2016, as were the updated e-books. The Swedenborg Foundation made an important step forward in our audiobook offerings by teaming up with Audible, a very popular audiobook site affiliated with Amazon. Sound engineering adjustments to the recording of some new and the recording of some new elements, in other words, the existing recording needed adjusting, and we needed to record some new elements for them, both of which are time consuming, are required to offer our existing audiobooks through this venue. At this point, the titles available there, as you may see there, is are Divine Providence and Divine Love and Wisdom. Heaven and Hell and True Christianity Volume 1 will be added soon. In 2016, now for our sales and free downloads, there was an interesting little coincidence that happened with our sales. In 2015, we sold 1,887 volumes. In 2016, we sold 1,000 887 volumes <laughs> and 136 audiobooks, which aren't mentioned up there. Our sales of NCE, so those are the printed physical volumes. Our sales of NCE ebooks dipped ever so slightly from last year's 2,642 units to this year's 2,467. Combined, these sales of units in all categories 
ran just under the total of sales during 2015. In 2015, the total number of NCE titles sold was 4,529, that's the downloads, and during 2016, it reached 4,490. Those paid sales numbers, however, were far exceeded, as usual, by the free downloads of NCE volumes from our website. These free downloads in 2016 came to 21,963, an increase of 8.4% over 2015's total of 19,633. The most popular download this year was the PDF version of the Portable Heaven and Hell at 2,881 downloads, followed closely by the downloads of the PDF version of Secrets of Heaven Volume 1 at 2,389 downloads. This activity brought to, drum roll please, 221,898 the total free downloads of NCE volumes since project inception, easily surpassing the 200,000 milestone mentioned in last year's report. And as for our funding, in October 2015, the board made a significant change in the way NCE funding is handled from a budget perspective, setting aside a total of $2 million in a board-designated fund that is intended to take the current phase of the NCE through to completion. In 2016, NCE expenses were $372,386, and there were total donations, grants, and matching funds of $67,590 that came in to offset those costs for a net deduction of $304,796. So this leaves 1.6, uh, almost 1.7 million remaining in the fund as of December 31st. 2016, and note that all of these are preliminary figures subject to adjustment during the audit. We are truly grateful for all your support. Thank you, 